Today I received my Haku FX888, and I'll show what comes in the box, how to set it up, and do a test solder. First I'll pop open the box. I ordered this new on Amazon Prime from a company called B&D Enterprises. Inside, you see there's a new box, some advertisements, and some free solder and a desolder wick sample provided by this particular seller. So I'll tear into it real quick and unpack all the pieces. I overlooked this iron a number of times while I was looking to upgrade because the images of it made it look a bit like a Fisher-Price toy, and I thought it was some cheesy knockoff. After reading the reviews, however, I realized I might be very wrong, especially after Adafruit Industries specifically recommended it. So here's the iron holder, which comes with the wet sponge and a wire sponge for cleaning the soldering iron's tip. Here's the actual soldering iron, and finally the soldering base. After unwrapping it all, you can see the iron fits really nicely into the holder, and the plug must be properly oriented and inserted into the base. Now to plug in the soldering station, and set the temperature to about 400 degrees. I'll open up the wire sponge and set it here for now in case I need it, and turn the soldering station on. Now I've sped this up a bit, but it took exactly 34 seconds to get up to temperature the very first time. And as you can see, the charging light turns off when the desired temperature is met. I'll test the temperature with a bit of lead-free solder, and it looks like it's more than hot enough. I'll set up a little demo to see how well it performs on a small, simple project. I'll use it to do a test solder on some 16-gauge stranded wire. The soldering iron comes with a 1.6mm chisel tip that might be a bit wider than you're used to with the typical probe tips that come with some soldering irons. Having just upgraded from an 80 watt basic cheap soldering iron myself, I can tell right away that the temperatures on this one are much higher and far more consistent. I don't have a heat gun with me today, so I'll crank it to the maximum heat to try and seal this heat shrink tube with just the heat waves coming off the iron. And well, it seems to work just fine, in a pinch. During all this, the handle is not showing much signs of heat through the soft grip on the handle. Now the final unit looks like this, with the wire sponge inserted in the opening under the iron and the wet sponge on the recess pad in front. In conclusion, the FX888 has a remarkable heat up time with extremely high and consistent temperatures, and it's a solidly constructed compact unit that impressed me immediately. So I highly recommend it.